friends and welcome back. If you're new here, hi, my name is Callie Bransfort and today I'm going to be sharing with you some toddler learning activities. I think a lot of us are spending a little bit more time at home with our little ones um, than we were pre-COVID and we're not only looking for ways to entertain them, but we're probably starting to think about if there's things that we could be doing to help them continue to learn since a lot of them are maybe not in daycare as much as they used to be or they're just not out and about doing some of the stuff they used to do like library hour and all of that sort of stuff. Now the good news is at the toddler age, most of the learning happens just through play. So it kind of happens naturally, but I want to share some specific activities that will help to sort of foster some additional skills. I think I have 13 of them. It might be 14, might be 12, might be 16. I don't know. So let's dive into it. First, a few quick notes before we jump into the activities. One, my son is currently almost two years old. So the majority of my activities are sort of around that age, looking at like 18 months to three years. Now for some of the activities, I am going to offer some modifications and scaffolding you can do to make it either a little easier or a little bit more difficult to depending on where your child is. Two, I always like to remind you guys when I share a new activity is that sometimes our kids don't just like grasp an idea right away. Sometimes we put stuff in front of them and we think they're like, they should just get it, but they don't always. So I always like to remind you guys to model an activity the way that it's supposed to be done for your child. It will help them understand how they're supposed to engage with the activity and usually leads to them being engaged with it longer. And three, just in case this is your first time finding my channel, I also have shared 16 at home toddler activities. So just really easy activities to do at home with your toddler. I shared those a couple of months ago. So I will link that video down below to give you even more ideas. Okay, activity number one is to do matching games. And the options are honestly like endless with matching because you can match all sorts of stuff. You can match socks, you know, help have them help you do the laundry. You can match stuffed animals with pictures of animals in your books. Here you see my son Miles is matching animal figurines with animal picture tokens. What's really great about matching is it not only helps to build memory and direction following, but it also helps foster general cognitive skills. The matching game that you see here that Miles is playing with is from our Love Every Play Kit subscription, which you've probably heard me talk about before because I swear by these kits and I talk about them all the time. You receive a box every three months based on your child's age with developmentally appropriate toys and books inside. And these are hands down, without a doubt, our most played with toys. They are most engaged with toys. That's why I always swear by them. That's why I always suggest them. So if you're curious to hear a little bit more about these play kit subscriptions, you're gonna see a couple other toys from this kit probably throughout this video because we use them all the time. I will link my full review in the description box down below. Okay, activity number two is a little recipe to create some DIY mud. Now, personally, I'm not really against my child playing in the mud. I don't really care if he goes up there and he comes home covered in mess. What happened? What happened? Did you get mud on your feet? Yeah, it's okay. It's just dirt. But I know some parents are a little more hesitant, especially if their kids are a little younger and like everything's going in their mouth. And so this is sort of like a cleaner, more taste friendly alternative if regular mud makes you a little bit nervous. You're gonna mix cocoa powder with water to get a mud like color. And then to thicken it up, you're going to add some type of thickener um, like coconut flour, almond flour, or even some baby oatmeal until the mud is thick enough to play. Just a note, you don't wanna use regular flour because regular flour when uncooked contains bacteria in it. So that's why you want to use something like baby oatmeal or almond flour. If you only have regular flour, you're just going to need to cook it first to kill off any bacteria. Then I just put this mud out with some pans, some spoons, and other items from nature to make mud pies. Again, if you're okay with real mud, then just use the real stuff. And if your child is older, a fun thing they could do is help you collect items to put in the pies. And again, technically this DIY mud is edible for those kids who do try to eat everything. However, it probably doesn't taste that good if you're using bittersweet cocoa, but of course, Miles just had to try it. <laughs> it doesn't taste good. Man, it's not for eating. One activity I love doing is cleaning farm animals or just like whatever animal figurines you have around the house. Fill the bucket or if you have a water table with some soapy water and then offer some small items to clean with like some toothbrushes that you haven't used or some eyedroppers. Letting them clean the animals this way is going to help to build fine motor skills. And as you're playing with the animals, you can talk about the animals, talk about their names, talk about the sounds that they make. And that's just gonna add a social and conversational aspect to this activity as well.
If your child hasn't started that idea of colors yet, a simple way to introduce the idea is to cut up some construction paper with large squares and then some smaller matching squares. Then I used laminating paper just to make it last longer, but this is not necessary. And then you'll have your child match the small squares with the big ones, starting with three or four colors at first and then working up to more. This is a way more concrete idea to help them grasp the idea of matching colors. Once they master that, after a couple of days, try introducing some different items in the same color and then have them match that way. A final variation of this, if you want to make it more of a gross motor activity, is to put large pieces of construction paper of different colors on the floor and then get a basket full of toys with those colors. For younger kids, you're definitely going to want to model how to do this at first and you might want to start with just two colors. For older kids, you obviously could do multiple colors. You could also not provide the basket for them of toys and have them go out and find different objects or different toys themselves that match the colors on the tiles. So you can really scaffold this for younger kids all the way up to preschool age. Okay, for this next activity, you're going to need a tunnel. I will link the pop-up tunnel that we have down below. It was super affordable. And what you're going to do is sit on one side of the tunnel and have your child sit on the other side and you're going to pass a ball through the tunnel by putting a ball inside and lifting your end of the tunnel. It might take a little bit of modeling, a little bit of trial and error for your kid to get grasp the concept. This is a really good activity for them to understand cause and effect as well as teamwork. And it's a good gross motor skill as well. Mama! Oh my goodness, is there a dog in the tube? Olive, get out of that tube. Okay, the next activity is Simon Says, which for a lot of us is just like a silly game that we played like at summer camp, but it's actually really great for this age because it helps build receptive language as well as direction following. So if your child is old enough to play it the traditional way with Simon Says, play it that way. But if they're not quite old enough to understand the concept of only do it when I say Simon Says, just drop that part and just do it kind of as a like do what I do game. Okay, next up is flashcards. Simple packs of flashcards with common objects are really easy to come by. You can like find them at the Dollar Tree, you can buy them for a dollar, dollar or two on Amazon. And there are so many different activities that you can do with them. You can ask them to find you the one that you ask for. You can point to one and have them say the name of what it is. You can hide them around the room and then say, can you find me the cat? Can you find me the ball? And if your child's a little bit older, you can like really hide them around the room and make it a little bit trickier. And again, you can prompt them by saying, find me the card with the cat. And then you can sort of cue them by saying warmer or colder. All right, one of my favorite activities that I feel like sometimes just gets overlooked because it really just looks like play is to take some of your child's either like their doll or their stuffed animal and to literally imitate day-to-day -day life, like conversation, the just things that you would do with your child with the stuffed animals. So have a doll or a plush toy and encourage your child to hold, talk, dress, or feed it the way that you would talk to your child. I like to have one for myself and then one for my son so that I can sort of model for him how to do it and then encourage him to do it with his plush toy as well. This not only helps to build language, but it also helps a ton with creativity and imagination. This activity is not only hugely beneficial to language skills, but it's also really great for creativity and imagination. Okay, next up is kinetic sand, which is super fun sensory activity. So while you can purchase it, you can also make your own. This recipe that I'm using requires about two and a half cups of fine play sand, plus one and a half cups of cornstarch, and then you're gonna mix in about a half cup of oil, such as a vegetable oil or an olive oil. You can also make a taste-friendly version of kinetic sand or moon sand using almond flour and coconut oil if you're worried that your little one's going to try to eat it. This is a great sensory activity and you can also incorporate all sorts of other skills into this. You can hide small objects inside. You can give them a spoon or a toothbrush to go searching for the stuff inside of the sand. If your child's a little bit older, you could hide letters inside and have them search for specific letters. There's just a million different things that you can do with kinetic sand and kids love it. So it is always a big winner. Also just a note that this can be a very messy activity and your child will not keep all of the sand inside of the designated bowls and that's totally okay. It's part of them playing with it. But just a note that if mess is one of your triggers as a parent, you definitely are gonna wanna plan to do this somewhere outside. Okay, this next activity is another water activity. I was actually joking with a friend the other day about like how amazing water is for children. Like just endless 
endless things you can do with them. You can like play in the water table and then they can go swimming in the pool and then you come home and they're playing in the bathtub, which is the coolest thing ever. And then they wash their hands in the sink, which is so exciting. Just like water is endless. And one thing that I love to do with my son is to practice pouring using water. He absolutely loves it and I love it because it's really helping him build his fine motor skills and good hand-eye coordination. Now you could do this at a water table outside or I have this little play sink that came with our Love Every Play Kit subscriptions. Um, but my son loves doing this. He will happily do it for like up to an hour sometimes. Okay, another activity with painter's tape. I feel like painter's tape is like the best toddler toy you never knew existed. It has been entertaining my child since he was like a year old. But the process of peeling tape is actually a really great fine motor activity because it helps strengthen their hands and fingers. And painter's tape is perfect for this because it's really easy to pull off and you can literally put it down anywhere. So place them on a high chair, place them on a small table, the walls, the windows, the options are really endless, but kids love pulling this off and sticking it back on. And like I said, you're building up some really good hand strength. Okay, final activity also using painter's tape is you're gonna create different shapes on the floor using painter's tape. And then using bean bags, you're gonna call out the shape to your child and have them try to throw the bean bag into the shape. This is obviously great for gross motor skills as well as listening and cognitive skills. If your child's a little bit younger, try starting with just two shapes until they really get those down. If your child's a little bit older, obviously you can do multiple shapes. You wanna do more? <laughs> Stand in the triangle. Good boy! Where's the circle? Where's the square? Good job! Also, if you don't own bean bags, they're really easy to make your own DIY bean bags. Just use some old socks, fill it with rice and beans, and then tie it off. No need to buy any. All right, guys, that does it. That is some fun learning activities you can do with your toddler at home. One of my favorite things about my last toddler activity video I did was seeing you guys have your toddlers doing all the activities. I got so many shares on my Instagram stories and it was so much fun to see them. So if you try any of these out with your toddler, make sure that you tag me. I love, love, love to see them and I always love to share them on my stories as well. But that does it for today's video. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.